2004, I moved out to an acreage, and I was the first left-hand turn out of Yorkton. So I ended up with 55 cats and kittens. I actually ended up finding homes for all of them, and I kept about 12, got them all spayed and neutered and shots and everything, and uh, yeah, after that I just felt like these poor animals have, have nothing and nobody to speak for them. So that's what made me start, start Paws and Claws. I lived on a farm all my life. I've had animals around me, cows, chickens, pigs, dogs, cats, and I'm just an animal lover from day one I was born. I went to Pet Value one day and there was an adoption day and I just crawled in with all the pups and I was hooked. <laughs> I've been with the rescue for about two and a half years now. My first foster I ever had was Ada. Um, I'm going, yeah, I'm going to foster, and then in a week she was gone, and I bawled my eyes out when I went home. It was very hard to let her go. But as you foster, it does get easier because you do know that you are going to get home. The love of animals has always been with me, as long as I can remember. I grew up always having a dog, long term. 16-year-old um, shepherds that I grew up with, old poodle terrier. Um, and we kept dogs for a very long time or until they, they passed. They were, part of, they were part of the family. So I've always had um, dogs for my children. We've, we've always been a dog family, usually having more than one at a time. A few years ago, actually, March 2015, I think, or June 2015, Karen had a post on Facebook, a plea for a foster for two dogs that she had coming in. So I thought, hey, I can do this. And they did. Well, right now we have about 30 fosters and we have about 44 volunteers. To be a foster, we do have foster forms that you fill out and it's just basically your name and address and what you would like to foster, whether it's big dogs, little dogs, cats, kittens, reptiles, snake, like we get a little bit of everything, eh? So, I mean, it's whatever you would like to foster. We provide everything, uh, the vetting, food, everything. You just provide the love and feed them. I had a couple Parvo pups in. I'm the one that usually takes them in. Parvo is a very deadly disease. Um, I encourage people to vaccinate for Parvo. Um, the dog will get sick and within hours they could be dead. Um, like I say, I have uh, fostered two Parvo pups. The one wasn't very ill. She was actually really good. She found a very nice home. Um, the other one was Lola. She uh, was a very, very sick little girl. Uh, we almost lost her. She came to me. She was still very sick. I had to take her back to the vet. Um, but when she came back the second time, I nursed her back to health and she was able to find a very nice home. Um, the third one, his name was Bandit. Um, he was very, very sick little pup. Uh, unfortunately, we could not save him. I was all ready for him to come, and he just didn't come. I, that was a very, very sad day. Very sad. <laughs> when we got Coda, Coda was a, a six and a half month old, uh, chocolate lab, Catahoula, Pitbull, Cross. She was raised in a pen. She had no social skills. She had no, um, no manners. She was food aggressive. I had a 15-year-old uh, Jelty at the time, and Coda didn't like her in my space. Coda bonded with me very well and, and was my protector. She didn't want the other dogs to come, to come near me. Um, with some working and with a personal trainer involved as well, we were able to get her out of, you know, to have some better social skills and tolerate other people being around me and her knowing how to interact properly with other dogs. I have another rescue dog, his name is Jack, and Jack is very tolerant of other dogs, so he was very, he's very gentle and he's very accepting of all the other foster dogs that we have come and go through. Coda and Jack get along wonderfully, they're like siblings, really. <laughs> 
I got a call from Dr. Allen in Kamsack and she said, Karen, she said, I got a puppy brought in about six weeks old, German Shepherd Cross, beautiful puppy. A uh, lady had brought, brought him in. The family decided that they would just, it was easier to hit them over the head and get rid of them than to take them to the SPCA or call a rescue. So Dr. Allen phoned me and asked, you know, is Paws and Claws willing to take on this dog? We had no idea, like we had no idea what the damage was. When I picked him up in Kamsack, I cried again because he would just stand and then fall over. He just looked like a fish out of water. So I bought him back to Yorkton, brought him to a foster. We bought him one of those play pens so that it was soft, so that if he did fall over in that, then he would, he would not hurt himself. But uh, you know, you should see him today. Being that young, the puppies, they can sure bounce back with having a head injury. So he's been adopted and he's a beautiful big boy now. As fosters, we foster everything and everything. And we put our heart and soul into them if they're sick and try and get them well. We lose some and we cry for them because it just breaks our heart. But the ones we do save, we, we, do, we are joyful and happy. And, uh, but, oh, with a big heart. <laughs> And uh, um, we also are happy when um, our adoptees send us photos of updates on how our fosters are doing and how they've grown. And some of them are just gorgeous. And yeah, it just fills your heart with joy to foster. Paws and Claws Animal Rescue doesn't have one physical location. We have fosters throughout this area. Um, Manitoba border to Regina, so we really work within, well with the community. The benefits of having fosters away from Yorkton itself is that if a dog is found in those areas, we can get them in a foster quicker. We don't have to cause more distress on the animal, transporting them, getting them back to our, our location or our area. You don't know if they were somebody's animal. You don't know if they were loved. But I mean, that's why I always say, like, you know, spay and neuter. Then, you know, it's, it's just, it's such a easy thing to do. Yes, it's expensive, but you do it once, you don't have to worry about the litter of 12. All we need is people with a loving heart to open their homes. Um, like I say, the animals, they don't have a voice and we are their boys, and we need to get it out there. Paws and Claws Animal Rescue is always looking for more fosters and volunteers. All of our money is fundraised, so, so it's a lot of man hours that we um, need to keep up with the vet bills, food, supplies that we need for the animals, collars, leashes, any um, extraordinary expenses that come up, behavior training, Often when you're having a dog that comes into rescue that isn't a puppy that's one or two years old, they have behavior problems that sometimes need to have some work done. And all of the funds that we raise can help that happen and give these animals the best second chance that they can have. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.